Welcome to our presentation, Recalibrating Partnerships, New Roles for University Community Partners in Pandemic Times. At the Northwest Indian Language Institute, or NEELI, last year after the pandemic hit, we quickly realized we wouldn't be able to offer our usual two-week summer institute in person. This presentation is the story of what we did instead and some of the things we learned. We come to you from a number of places in the Pacific Northwest and want to acknowledge the people whose lands we speak to you from. We invite you to pause the video to read more about these lands. We also thank the conference organizers and are grateful for the opportunity to come together on Indigenous Hawaiian homelands. Cumulatively, we give thanks to the Indigenous people whose lands we reside and work. As Neely staff and faculty, we commit to the ongoing support and allyship to revitalize the ancestral languages of the Indigenous people who seek our expertise, advice, allyship, and support. Finally, as we speak to some of the affordances COVID brought to us, we acknowledge the ongoing and painful losses for all of us conference participants. May we find strength and peace together. The Language Revitalization Learning Series came about due to the efforts of many people and groups of them are listed here. You'll hear more about these people in the presentation, but they have all influenced what we're sharing today. It was truly a team effort. Today, we'll each present a piece of our story. So Jana will give us a little bit of a background. Marnie will talk about bringing in community. Brittany will discuss the participants, Robert, the design, Keegan, the way we produce the live sessions. Judith will share more about the evaluation and I'll come in at the end with what we're really walking away from this experience with. With its 23 year history, the Northwest Indian Language Institute at the University of Oregon is among the oldest institutional organizations in the United States dedicated to indigenous language revitalization. Neely's mission is to support and strengthen indigenous language preservation and revitalization efforts. Neely's signature program is an annual summer institute established in 1998. The yearly two week four credit program serves 50 to 60 indigenous language teachers, learners and activists, including tribal youth. In March of 2020, due to health concerns for our participants, Neely began to develop an abbreviated version of its annual summer institute for online delivery. Neely collaborated with tribal language partners to create the 10 day language revitalization learning series, featuring 10 experts from different native communities presenting on topics related to language revitalization. Offered at no cost is a gift during these challenging times. LRLS was a chance for Neely to experiment with synchronous learning and extend our asynchronous online delivery for our Summer Institute audience. Our specific goals were to, one, provide a forum for engaging in language revitalization, two, motivate and build community during a time when so many programs had been canceled, and three, increase Neely's impact. When we realized that the Summer Institute may not happen in 2020 because of COVID, we collectively thought we could not let this happen. And several people said, I will help. What can I do? What needs to be done? When we heard these echoes of assistance throughout our community, we got to work planning and building what the 2020 Summer Institute would look like. And it became the Language Revitalization Learning Series, LRLS. We asked past Summer Institute instructors and participants to be instructors for the LRLS. We needed their experience and guidance through this new situation and they delivered. They worked hard to develop ideas for classes and with their guidance and experience provided a more smooth online experience for all participants. Relying on past relationships and networking were key to the Summer Institute 2020 success or the LRLS. Don't underestimate these relationships when building something new in unknown times. Good standing in the community is also an important component to our success. Do this real and meaningful work from the beginning and always so when hard times come along, that they, as they surely will, 
you have the support of Indigenous communities to rely on. After bringing in the community partners, we had to start thinking about participants and registration organization and how that might further affect recruitments um, for building the LRLS team. For Summer Institute in normal non-pandemic times, we set out, uh, send out the call for registrations through our networks, maybe two or three months ahead of time. And we usually have a fair amount of people register, um, maybe 50 to 70. Uh, we like our in-person Summer Institute participant numbers to be around 50. When we sent out our LRLS registration links through our networks, we posted it um, on our website as well near the end of May, a couple weeks before LRLS itself. Within the first couple days of opening the registration, we had over 100 people sign up. Um, and we thought about how maybe we should cap the registration since logistically we weren't sure if we were going to run into problems trying to host really large Zoom rooms. Um, but our community partners really urged us to keep it open and see what happened. So we did. Um, and in deciding not to cap the registration, by the time we closed the registration on June 12th, just two weeks after we'd opened it and only a couple days before um, the series began, we had 479 people register. Um, so the other really cool thing about the registrations um, is that because we were able to do everything online, we offered the sessions totally free. Um, we got people from all over the world. So besides the U.S., um, a big portion from the Pacific Northwest or other places in the U.S., we actually had a lot of people from South Asia, um, India to be exact. And that's really exciting um, because for a participant from India to come over for Summer Institute in person, it's it, while not impossible, it's much more difficult and expensive. Um, so LRL has totally eliminated these barriers. So now that we have almost 500 people registered, and although not all signed up for the synchronous sessions, um, we realized that we were really going to need some volunteers and facilitators to help us in making it run smoothly for those participants in the daily um, Zoom live sessions. So we did what we always do at Neely and we reached out to our community. We utilized the relationship, relationships we established through the almost two and a half decades of Neely with um, different communities and different institutions across the US, um, as well as some of the teachers and students from U of O itself. And we built a team of about 15 volunteers who graciously contributed their time uh, for the 10 days in helping LRLS be the best experience it could be for our participants. So before we look um, super carefully at how the um, facilitators and volunteers um, helped out, I wanna show a little bit about the design of LRLS and how we, how we envisioned it. Um, first of all, we knew that we wanted to be structured around a daily event. Um, that is approximately a one hour event with a, a speaker who would be talking about a topic of their choice. So we wanted it to make, make sure that these were all our community partners that were speaking. And so everything was centered around that one hour. Now, normally a Neely Summer Institute is a full day event. Um, but we knew we weren't going to be able to quite do uh, to do that. So, but we did want to extend the learning a little bit. So on top of each daily event, we decided to have a pre-event task. Maybe they were doing a reading, a video, a PowerPoint, an audio, and then a follow-up task, maybe a discussion board or a collaborative project or something like that. So that would extend the topic. It would extend the learning. It would extend the event at least a little bit each day on both ends of it. Um, we also designed this so that we would have one topic each day for the two weeks, because normally Neely Summer Institute takes part in two weeks. And so we wanted to follow the same thing. And um, as Brittany mentioned, we have facilitators that um, were helping out after in each of the topics, because we didn't want them just talking for the full hour. We wanted to have engagement with the uh, as much as possible. So people got to talk to each other. They maybe got to talk to the speaker of that each day. So the breakout rooms allowed us to have facilitators that could increase the engagement participants were able to have in each of the rooms. With all of these moving pieces and 100 people in Zoom rooms for about an hour for 10 days, we realized that we needed kind of a central place to keep all this information 
um, about the session, who was volunteering and working that day, and what was going to happen during that live hour. So we pulled together kind of a daily call sheet for facilitators and staff to be able to reference all of this different information and in kind of a, a, a place that was collaborative, um, questions could pop up there, and it was kind of a good reference point for both the production staff and the facilitators to understand kind of what was going to be happening during this jam-packed hour of presentation, Zoom breakout room, and then some kind of come back together time. W one huge piece of these live sessions that we realized is the with the breakout rooms and the facilitators and all of these participants, we needed to be constantly engaging our facilitators to get a sense of how the sessions were going, what was working, what wasn't working, as they were the people that were really interacting with our kind of created digital community on the most daily basis. So we sought feedback from them constantly. We hosted some strategy sessions with them so they could kind of give us a sense of what could be improved about our system, the different discussion prompts that we were giving them, and how else participants were looking for engagement on these topics. So they were really a main informant of how we were continually redesigning the LRLS as we went. So not only did we have the live sessions, but we also wanted to make sure that people that weren't able to attend because they were joining from all over the world, that they could um, be able to participate as well. So we looked at different models and at first we thought about just putting everything up on our website, but that was gonna to be too challenging uh, because as the numbers grew to be as large as they were. So we decided to follow a MOOC model or a massive online open course. Uh, and so we developed um, a, uh, a Canvas site, which is a LMS or learning management system uh, that allows you to kind of centralize everything and organize things for a learner experience. I'm sure most of you are familiar with uh, LMSs like Canvas or Blackboard. So we set up a free version of a Canvas site. Um, and this is what it looks like a little bit. There was a welcome page that got people oriented and so they could uh, get started with it. Um, one of the things in a normal summer institute is we have um, openings with prayers and um, speakers and things like that. And so we wanted to simulate that as much as possible. So we had um, a, a, an online version of an opening with some videos of people giving uh, prayers and, and, and speeches and talks and getting us started. Um, we had a daily schedule from the speakers, from the 10 different speakers, from nine different uh, language communities. And so that was all listed and centralized on the LMS on Canvas as well. Um, and one of the things, as we mentioned earlier, was we were really trying to help create community. And that was important for us. So we had a place for, you know, we had one place for um, casual conversation where people could interact. But we also had like this place using a Padlet where people could introduce themselves and talk about where they're coming from and um, what they're doing. And so it helped to build the community quite significantly on top of the breakout room sessions. Um, each week, uh, each daily session looked something like this. There was the um, general information, pre-session activity. Again, that was to extend the learning. Then we had the live session. Um, and then the recorded session for those that were joining us asynchronously could open that and watch the video of that later on. And then there was a post-session activity, something to follow up with. Um, and we posted the transcript because a lot of the stuff happened in the chat in the, in the rooms. So we posted the transcript from each um, daily session as well, because there was interesting things that happened on there. Um, the recorded sessions were available again, so that the asynchronous group could um, follow along and keep, keep track with the, the synchronous group. At the end, how did it go? What do we have to say in summary of it? Um, it, the event fulfilled a need for more information sharing across the language revitalization world. The presenters weren't our usual Neely instructors, but rather, as has been mentioned, practitioners from communities preserving their languages. Um, the broad span of presentation offerings were very useful, according to what they said on the surveys, to the participants. And they were uh, coming from a lot of different teaching situations and backgrounds. There were absolute rave reviews for each course, but especially those that provided teaching tools. 
And so that seems to be what people look forward to in a big presentation like this. As we mentioned, and you got to see glorious images of COVID, um, COVID shut down our usual in-person summer institute, but something else blossomed. An event that expanded our revitalization support across the globe, as you saw, with no fees attached, everyone could afford to participate. With no travel, meals, and lodging needed to attend, participants could be in their own home communities and link up from all time zones. What was exciting were the connections uh, that were formed and participants really seemed hungry for this. They wanted more contact and chat time in breakout rooms. They wanted to hear each other's stories, to feel camaraderie in a field where they often feel very much alone. They left the sessions feeling excited, stimulated and recharged for their sometimes isolated work. So as we look forward to Summer Institute 2021, what do we want? We want to be all together at the University of Oregon gathering classrooms, and that's not going to happen yet. Instead, our Summer Institute will be again online. So we'll, we will, however, return to multi-day classes. We had some NEH CARES funding that supported this course development to continue to reach out to language revitalization practitioners we will keep the short daily presentations this coming year as well. And we're still seeking ways to build and enhance community at a distance. As you've heard in offering LRLS, our first thought was outreach to get something out there to boost practitioners. And let me be clear that we were some of the practitioners that needed boosting. So it was truly a group feeling that this was something needed for us, as well as the people who were able to come. We had an opportunity to build a new and re-envision some of our language work. You've heard of some of the outcomes and some of the changes we'd make if we did it again. One very important thing was an opportunity to examine and to recommit to our collaborative practices and ideals, to promote the leadership and expertise of more community partners and amplifying more expert voices. That was the presenter certainly, but, and you all know this from attending events like, like ICLDC, there's so much wisdom that comes together. So with the format we had, we were able to really listen to and learn from one another. Summer 2020, also in the United States, focused on calling out longstanding systemic racism. Language, language revitalization is a way to promote social justice and we're, we're proud to be a part of that effort. But we also know that universities are complicit and that's where Neely is housed. We know the balance of power is inequitable and we always ask how, how do we do this in a better way? Through LRLS, we were given this opportunity to continue to recalibrate and balance the roles of university-based and community-based partners. Again, we really extend our thanks to all of those who participated as participants, as facilitators, as presenters, as part of the production team. And we also thank uh, all of you for listening today. Next slide, please. And invite your questions. Thank you. <laughs>